Hello mates and welcome to the Baron Reviews with me, the Baron. Today's game is The Invisible Hours, a murder mystery by developers Tequila Works for the Oculus Rift and Vive. It's hard to call The Invisible Hours a game because you don't play it in any kind of traditional fashion. Instead, this is something new altogether. A completely novel storytelling experience that creates a whole new genre in VR, landing somewhere between a point and click mystery game and an interactive movie. Setting up the scene like a classic whodunit, the player follows along as a detective tries to deduce the killer from among six residents in a remote mansion, in an alternate timeline where inventor Nikolai Tesla has been murdered. The story plays out like a movie broken up into four chapters, but the amazing twist is that the player has the freedom to watch the story from any perspective he chooses, at any time he chooses, with the ability to freeze, fast forward and rewind time, as well as move freely around the mansion. This means the player has an edge over the detective by being able to piece together a complete picture of what happened by pinning down characters whereabouts and actions at key points in the timeline, as well as seeing how characters behave when they think they're alone. Truly, it's a remarkable idea. The game goes for a realistic style aesthetic, even though the graphics have a cartoony look and feel to them, but it works great since the facial expressions are very natural. I've read a lot of complaints about the game as being too blurry, and whilst playing on the Rift myself, I did notice the visuals were a bit soft, but I really can't say it caused me too many problems. I could see text crisply and read things just fine, so it makes me wonder if this issue is worse on the Vive. Either way, it's definitely a problem for some players, Vive or otherwise, so that alone warrants it should be addressed by the developers. The audio is fantastic, with a great job being done on the part of the voice actors, each providing unique cadence, tones and accents to the story, helping create memorable personas for the characters. The music in game is wonderfully atmospheric, but also sparingly used, with strategically placed orchestral swells heightening the emotion of critical scenes. Locomotion in the game is achieved by teleport only, which may be off-putting for some VR players, but I found it works totally fine in this context, since the majority of your time is spent in place, just watching a scene unfold. It also allows you to zip around the mansion really quickly, since the teleportation is unrestricted. The player also has the ability to lock on to characters, in which case the camera will automatically change angle to keep up with the character if they're walking. I found this mode not so great, because I felt like the camera changes too often when characters walk, and the angle often felt arbitrary. It might have been a better option if the camera could lock on to people and then just glide along with them, maybe giving the player the option to rotate as they move. But all the same, what's there is still nice to have as an option. The player can interact with objects by picking them up, but cannot interact with the world itself. So when an item is picked up, it can be looked at, but then immediately ghosts back to the original position when released, and characters don't react to objects the player is interacting with. The purpose of this is to allow the players to find clues, but actually this is one thing I wish was handled a little differently. Key items that are picked up are checked off as clues to a scene, but there's no clue book keeping a log of anything you find, nor can the player use the clues to complete anything. So, in the end, item inspection serves as not much more than a hidden object type affair. I kept wanting and expecting items to operate more like Resident Evil, where certain things could be picked up and then examined to reveal further information. So, for example, maybe a suitcase could be opened to reveal something, or you could find an item with some small hidden text on it. The game has a little bit of that, but not to the extent I wanted. One last thing on the controls, I played this game natively on the Rift by purchasing through the Oculus Store, and as such the controls are perfect. However, there's horror stories out there from some people who are using the Touch, but bought the game through Steam. I can't confirm for myself, but apparently the Steam version does not play friendly with the Touch controllers at all, with teleportation supposedly being unplayably screwy, so be warned. If you didn't know, Tequila Works are also the developers behind the game The Sexy Brutal, which similarly put itself out there with unique gameplay that toyed around with repeating timelines and solving mysteries by utilising multiple perspectives. It's not hard to see how Invisible Errors came to be then, and applying their novel approach to a game in VR feels like the perfect evolution for Tequila Works. The first wave of AAA developers have the opportunity to shape what VR gaming can be in the future. So it's such a breath of fresh air to see a game that's bold, clever, and quite frankly unapologetic about going against the grain. So that's it from me, The Baron. If you're interested in buying this game, it can be found in the link below. And if you like this review, please remember to like and subscribe. So until next time, cheers.